Hello again and welcome to your RPAS training video briefing on ICAO and CASR 101. So first of all, what is ICAO? You've probably heard the term mentioned around the place with regards to UAVs and aviation in general. ICAO stands for International Civil Aviation Organisation. Okay, this is not CASA. This is basically the worldwide United Nations version of CASA. Um, ICAO is part of the United Nations. There are 191 countries that are currently signatories to ICAO. And it was set up at the end, towards the end of World War II in 1944, when the United Nations realised that there was going to be a need to standardise air practices all around the world. So ICAO, as I said, is a part of the United Nations that deals with individual countries. Uh, those individual countries, once they sign up as signatories to ICAO, they adopt a certain standard or code of practice uh, that ICAO have issued as guidelines and, and general um, rules. And each country takes those rules on board. And once they become signatories to, they, to ICAO, the rest of the world know that they are uh, on the same sort of page with regards to things like operation standards, licensing standards, uh, and planning and development standards. So to give you an example, uh, lots of airlines fly into different countries all around the world. Now those pilots of those airliners uh, don't need licenses in each individual country if they are from a country that are an ICAO signatory. So what that's saying is uh, the world recognise the ICAO recognised licence and these guys are, are sort of free to fly in and out of these countries. Um, the same goes with the aircraft registrations uh, and things like that. So it's basically just a way to recognise a standardised practice, uh, a standardised sort of practice uh, all around the world with regards to those sort of things. So a few years ago ICAO started to deal with a user group on UAS or unmanned aerial systems. Um, they they recognise the need to start uh, liaising with various countries and um, find out what their needs were and in 2007 there was a user group formed uh, of, of quite a few countries, Australia, the US, the UK uh, and there's uh, about 20 other countries that are part of this UAS user group. So ICAO liaise with this user group, the user group liaise with each other and they come up with you know um, a code of standard practice that, 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 that everyone's sort of come together to work on. Now what came out of that was a recommended operations manual. Now this is the operations manual that you as UAV operators in Australia uh, need to compile and submit to CASA as part of your operator certificate um, application. So that all came from from ICAO, um, not directly from ICAO but it came through CASA uh, and CASA have adopted the recommendations that were made by ICAO with regards to the user's manual, uh, correct, sorry, the operations manual. Okay, uh, now ICAO realised the need for each individual country to come up with their own regulations that they could pass on to the operators, uh, you guys, you, the UAV operators within each country. And in Australia we have what's called the CASR 101. CASR stands for the Civil Aviation Safety Regulation Part 101. Okay, so this is our rules and guidelines for operating UAVs in Australia. Like I said, it's the Civil Aviation Safety Regulation. It's part of Australian common law. And it's the only legislation that's referenced in your operations manual. Okay, so there are quite a few um, regulation documents that, that govern aviation in Australia. There's CAR, CAOs, AIP. Now you don't need to know all about that. All you need to know about is what's in CASR 101. Okay, so we're going to have a bit of a look at that and hopefully get to the bottom of uh, some of the rules in, inside that, that, that planning document 
um, that might affect your operation. So uh, in 2002, CASA released what's called an advisory circular to do with CASR 101. Now you've probably seen it, it looks like this. If you talk to CASA, they'll send it out to you. Um, it's usually their first port of call when, when people start to make inquiries about operating UAVs in Australia. At the top here you can see it says AC101, unmanned aircraft and rockets. All right, now this is not CASR 101. This is an advisory circular to do with CASR 101. You can see here, point one references CASR part 101. Now what does all that mean? Uh, well, if we come down to the bottom here, it's got a very nice little explanation. I'll just highlight all that. Advisory circulars are intended to provide recommendations and guidance to illustrate a means but not necessarily the only means of complying with the regulations or to explain certain regulatory requirements by providing interpretive and explanatory material. So what that's saying is this document is not the rules. This document is an explanation of the rules. Uh, this is quite a common practice uh, in in aviation legislation um, because the rules are quite in depth they often have to write a, a, a quick version of the rules um, and a way to comply with those rules now that's what the advisory circular is it's nothing more than that now if you look at the bottom line here advisory circulars should always be read in conjunction with the reference to material uh, reference to regulations sorry Okay, so that's the AC101. Now you've probably seen that. If you haven't, I suggest you get hold of it. We can give it to you. Uh, it's, 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 it's a reasonably extensive sort of document. Okay. What we're going to do is a bit of homework on CASR 101. Now this is the actual CASR 101 document much more substantial document. This is the Common Law Part 101, uh, sorry, the CSR Part 101, which is part of Australian Common Law. Uh, you can see it's got quite a few sections here. Uh, we've got preliminary, uh, then we've got Section B, General prohib Prohibition on Unsafe Operations, Provisions, Part C here, Provisions Applicable, applicable to Unmanned Aircraft Generally, uh, down to D, tethered balloons and kites. Okay, that's probably not anything you need to be worried about. Part E, unmanned free balloons. Again, not something that's going to concern us too much. Then we get down to part F, UAVs. Sorry, there we go. U UAVs, general and operations of UAVs generally. All right, so if we look here at part 101, 245, operation near people. This is something that you are going to want to get to the bottom of. You're going to need to read all this and understand the legislation and how it relates to your operation. Uh, part two, uh, 2.250, where small UAVs may be operated, where large UAVs requirement for certificate, things like this. Okay, so you can see quite a, quite a lot of rules there that you guys are going to need to get on top of. If we keep coming down to part F.3, you can see certification of UAV controllers, UAV operator. So again, this section here is something that you would be very interested in. You'll hear a lot of rumors around the place talking to guys, you know, oh, they're going to bring out, they're going to change the rules and under two kilos, you don't need this and that. Okay, if it's not in this document, it is not the rules. Ignore it. It's just um, hearsay unless you see it inside this document somewhere. Okay, this is the rule platform that you are going to need to follow uh, with your uh, UAV business in Australia. Okay, so it's in your very best interest to be right on top of all these rules. Um, if you're going to operate a successful business, uh, you're going to need to understand how these rules are going to relate to your operation. Alright, so that being said, what we're going to do is um, some homework on part 101. So first of all, I'd like you to mark off all the irrelevant sections. You can print this out or, 
or just uh, take note of all the irrelevant sections. Um, so things like balloons and rockets, they aren't relevant to you, so cross all those out as you read through it. But then I want you to note the relevant section. So note the things that you think might affect your operation um, directly. So once you've done that, um, I want you to list the questions. Okay, if you've got any questions for us, we can get to the bottom of them. Um, okay. I've got some questions for you that I want you to answer. Uh, you can send them the answers through in an email or we can talk about it on the phone. But basically, question one, what sections of the CASR 101 deal with UAS operations in controlled airspace? All right, so I want you to go through the 101 and find all the sections that mention operations in controlled airspace. And while you're at it, see how that's going to relate to your particular operation. Uh, question two, what section of CASR 101 deals with operations over populous areas? Now this is a big one. This is something that most people, most operators are going to have to deal with um, to some sort of extent. Operation over populous areas or near populous areas is something we're all going to have to have a look at. Okay, question three, which section of the CSR 101 deals with operation of UAS near aerodromes? Okay, so again, that's in CASA, uh, CSR 101 somewhere. I want you to find that section and quote it for me. And while you're at it, have a look and make sure that it's not going to interfere with your business. If it is, you're going to need to make a change or you're going to need to adapt your operations manual to account for the rules in uh, CSR 101. Okay, so that should do for now. Uh, look through that document and, like I said, answer these questions. You, as best you can and take note of anything that you think might affect your business and write it down and we can have a talk about it. Okay, so enjoy that and I look forward to talking to you soon for our next briefing. Bye-bye.